Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the cool stuff I found in, for this episode. Starting off over at Hack a Day, there's a, a safety warning the Arduino GSM Shield may cause fires. So if you have a GSM Shield for your Arduino, they may turn into fire starters. Uh, one person has reported a small explosion and fire already in the Arduino forums. You may be asking yourself who the heck this guy is and what gives him the ability to second guess the Arduino team. Well, uh, this guy is a pretty senior guy. Um, he states that the problem is a tant capacitor, a tantalum capacitor used to decouple the GSM radio power supply from the main Arduino power supply. Uh, the tantalum capacitors are great for their low ESR properties. However, they have a well-known downside of getting very hot. That's right. And even exploding when stressed. So, uh, pretty interesting. Definitely be careful or even better, potentially change that capacitor out for something else. From Mashable, nine life logging apps to log personal data. This one is kind of a, uh, you know, a, a pet project of mine, if you will. You know, I've always kind of wanted to be uh, a little progressive and have a, a log of my life. And um, these are life logging apps that you install on your phone, and they basically keep track of where you're going and what you're doing and how you're using your phone, and that gets turned into, a, you know, a, an electronic type diary, if you will. Not really a diary, but just a log of, of your activities. Kind of cool if you're into that sort of thing. So there are nine apps here uh, that Mashable uh, reviews, so definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in doing. Uh, also over at Hackaday, announcing Adafruit's Blue Fruit. That's right. What is Blue Fruit? What? Well, Blue Fruit is a very tiny and very cheap Bluetooth module breakout board that allows anyone to take 12 digital inputs and turn them into a Bluetooth HID device. If you're planning a portable battery-powered arcade controller, just plug in a Blue Fruit, set up your key presses in your software, and rock out. Uh, on board the Blue Fruit, are an FTDI programming connector, 12 input pins, a few power pins, a custom FCC and CE certified CSR Bluetooth module. And that's really about it. If you're looking for a simple GPIO to Bluetooth adapter without an overwrought Arduino setup, then this is the best solution uh, that Hackaday has seen so far. Pretty awesome, especially if you're looking to do, uh, you know, that type of connectivity. So definitely check it out. From geekygadgets.com, the Arcos Gamepad 2 specifications have been unveiled. Gamers waiting for more details on the Arcos Gamepad 2 will be pleased to learn that Arcos has this week revealed the inner working of the new handheld games console. They've redesigned the look of the latest Arcos Gamepad 2 with two buttons removed from the front and added to the sides of the device, providing shoulder controls together with larger speakers that have pushed cover pushed over the analog sticks a little bit. So uh, you get a seven inch IPS capacitive touch screen, 1280 by 800 resolution. Um, there's a 1.6 gigahertz quad core system on a chip with four GPU cores supported by two gigs of RAM. And you can either get eight gigs or 16 gigs of internal memory for game storage and applications. Um, an SD card slot, so you can stick in an additional 64 gigs, which is, <laughs> astronomical for uh, such as you know for sd cards anyway um unfortunately there's no information on pricing or availability yet but still pretty cool uh from mashable hands-on with the microsoft surface pro 2 that's right between the surface pro 2 and its arm-based cousin the surface 2 the pro has the most meaningful upgrade much better battery life other than that important spec though it hasn't changed much from, from changed much from its first generation incarnation 
but it's still a powerful PC trapped in the body of a tablet. So if you're looking for a uh, relatively powerful computer and tablet form factor, that may be what you are looking for. From the BBC in their news and business section, make it yourself, the rise of the micro manufacturers. The next in industrial revolution is underway. Make it yourself. Thanks to state-of-the-art design software and the latest computer-controlled laser cutters, 3D printers, and other manufacturing hardware, designers and inventors are turning their ideas into reality and getting them to market far more quickly and cheaply than they ever could before. Digital designs sent online to micro factories situated locally or abroad are reducing costs, waste, and supply chains. And the objects being made are not just your traditional arts and crafts, fair in plastic and wood, but high-end gadgets and inventions that have gone on to sell millions and make millions around the world. So pretty awesome. Um, as an example, the Square prototypes, uh, you know, the Square credit card readers, the prototypes were created in a public access workshop in Menlo Park, California. How cool is that? So, you know, definitely there's some pretty cool stuff going on there. From Ars Technica, in their technology and information lab, the Micro Duino, it's an Arduino clone nearly as small as a quarter and it costs $20. So the Arduino Uno capabilities, it has the Uno capabilities, but it's uh, two small boards for extreme portability. Um, a typical Arduino microcontroller's board is pretty small. Let's see here if I can grab my, disconnect it from the, here we go. So, you know, the uh, Arduino Uno, this is a fairly small board. It's slightly large. It's slightly taller than a credit card. It's about the same, not quite the same width as a credit card. And actually the same height as a credit card. So, uh, you know, fairly small, you know, not that tall either. Well, the Micro Duino uh, is even smaller. It's one inch by 1.1 inch. It's nearly the size of a quarter. Um, it's generating a lot of interest. It's on Kickstarter. Uh, it's tripled its $20,000 Kickstarter goal. Um, it basically, it divides the capabilities of an Arduino Uno into two boards, one acting as the microcontroller core and a second used to communicate with a PC. Once the Arduino compatible program is uploaded into the core board, the secondary module for communication with the PC isn't needed. So you can take that core board once you have it programmed with everything that you need it to do and uh, plug it into whatever circuit you'd like to use it with. So pretty neat. Um, definitely check it out. From Uber Gizmo, Lebo Lego makes cheap nanoscope possible. Lego bricks are not just toys that help with fuel the imagination of youngsters. These precision constructed bricks happen to be able to deliver some rather interesting real world applications ranging from power tools to robots. Innovative use of Lego bricks has always been a marvelous read. A bunch of uh, students from university college, London, uh, Sing Shua university and Peking university decided to work together in Beijing in order to turn out what they deem as the first low-cost atomic force microscope in the world. In other words, they used some Lego bricks to make up a nanoscope. Now, how about that for innovation? Pretty awesome. Definitely check this out. Uh, you know, not something that you see Legos being used for every day, for sure. Uh, that'll do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.